Hey everyone, it's Nenad and welcome back to another review video. So I've been using this 2022 third generation 4K Apple TV for a couple of weeks now. I thought I'd make this review video and let you know if I think a premium Apple streaming device is worth the hefty price tag. I've made sure to link the Apple TV down in the description for you to check out. And if you have any questions, just drop a comment down below and I'll definitely get back to you. So let's jump right into the unboxing and I'll show you all the features that the third third gen Apple TV has to offer. In typical Apple fashion, the first thing that you see when you open the box is the device itself. There's also the remote, which is actually a bit smaller than I had imagined, but it really feels super high quality in my hand. Moving on, we've got the power cable and a couple of instruction manuals, and that's it. So there's no HDMI or USB-C cable included in the box. I'm actually a bit disappointed that the Apple TV doesn't come with these two cables. I feel like with a premium product like this one, you should expect for it to include everything that you need to use the device. So I decided to go with the Wi-Fi and Ethernet version that comes with 128 gigabytes of storage and thread networking support. The device itself feels high quality and the glossy piano black sides and Apple logo give it a really premium look. The box is slightly smaller and lighter than the second gen version and Apple decided to go very minimalistic with the branding on this box and got rid of the word TV next to the Apple logo that was on the second gen. The design really is top notch and it'll look great in any setup so no complaints there. As for the ports it's pretty simple. On the back you have the power port, an HDMI 2.1 port, and an ethernet port that supports gigabyte ethernet. But if you just want to use Wi-Fi it does also support Wi-Fi 6. Inside the Apple TV there's the A15 Bionic chip which Apple claims to be 50% faster than the previous generation A12 Bionic chip. I personally haven't used the second gen Apple TV so I won't be able to tell if the third gen really feels faster, but I'm confident it'll be faster and smoother than my Fire TV stick. One of the things that I was looking forward to the most with this purchase was the new Siri remote. Just as a quick side note, Apple does sell this remote separately, and it's compatible with all of the previous Apple TV devices. So if you have an older Apple TV, you can upgrade to this new remote for $59. Getting back to the design, I think Apple knocked it out of the park. The aluminum finish feels great in my hand and it has a really nice weight to it, adding to the overall premium feel of the product. It's not too slim and it's not too bulky and I really just love how it feels. There are a few different buttons on the face of the remote and they all have a really high quality click to them. And moving on to the side of the remote, we have the Siri or voice command button. Going back to the front, the circular pad is also touch sensitive and I'll show you how that works in a minute. And finally, it charges with a USB-C cable, so just make sure you have one of those on hand. Setting up the Apple TV was super simple. I just plugged in the necessary cables and I installed this mounting system that I got off of Amazon onto the back of my TV. The mount feels a little big for the box so I think I purchased the wrong size but it'll do for now. If you have an iPhone you can choose to set up the Apple TV through your iPhone but if not just go through the setup manually. Also if you had an Apple TV before it'll actually download all of the apps you had on your previous device on your new Apple TV. So it makes the setup just that much easier. I went ahead and downloaded some of the apps that I use most, and this is what my home screen looks like. It's obviously going to look very similar to other Apple products, and the app icons are very clean and minimalistic. So in the top row, you have your favorites dock, and you can put your most used apps in this top section here. If you want to change this section, it's really easy to move the app icons around. You just click and hold the center button on the app you want to move, and once it starts wiggling, you can either swipe up or hit the arrows for the direction you want to move the icon. You can also create folders to help track your apps a little bit easier. Just click and hold again on the icon until it starts wiggling, then hit the play pause button on the remote and select new folder. If you want to see which apps are open, you can double tap on the home button and swipe through to see what you have open, just like you would on an iPhone. And if you want to close out the app, just swipe up and it'll close it out. Another thing that I was really excited to try was the picture calibration 
important tool. All you have to do is go to the settings and under video and audio, you'll find the color balance. Something to keep in mind is that you will need an iPhone to do this, so make sure you have one on hand. And once you go through the process, you'll see the final result. So in my case, it looks like the color balance made the picture a bit cooler, whereas I had my original picture a bit more on the warmer side. You may or may not like the balanced color, but at least you know the colors are more accurate. In terms of the picture quality coming from this Apple TV, all I can say is that it looks really great and I know that it would look even better if I had a higher quality 4K TV. And with this newest Apple TV, you're getting the highest quality that streaming services like Netflix and HBO Max can put out. So your movies and shows are all going to look really great no matter which app you're using to watch them. Another cool feature is that you can pair your AirPods directly to your Apple TV. So if you want to watch something without disturbing anyone else, you can go ahead and do that. In fact, you can pair two pairs of AirPods at once and have two people listening at the same time. You just go to remote and devices in the settings, go down to Bluetooth, select the AirPods that you want to connect, and you're done. One final feature that you might find useful is having multiple users signed into your Apple TV. So if you're sharing this device with family members, you can sign into their account and have all of their apps and settings however they want them. All you have to do is press and hold the home button and this sidebar will appear. You can go ahead and click on add user and go through the process of adding them. Again, super easy and very self-explanatory. So how much does the third gen Apple TV cost? Well, there's two models that you can choose from. The first is the Wi-Fi only model with 64 gigabytes of storage and that one goes for $129. If you want the Wi-Fi and Ethernet version that I have with 128 gigabytes of storage, that'll run you an extra $20. So do I think it's worth the price tag? In my opinion, the only reason why you might go with the Apple TV is because you really love the Apple ecosystem. It works effortlessly with your other Apple devices and having access to Apple Arcade or Apple Fitness is a big plus. But if you're only going to use a few apps just for streaming movies and TV shows, I definitely don't think you should go with the Apple TV. There are other cheaper options out there and you're better off just saving some money. Well, that's the end of the video and I want to thank you for sticking with me all the way until the end. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel to help with the YouTube algorithm and I'll see you in the next video.